tenancy petition filed by Henry Defax for convening the hearing virtually over the internet using Zoom. Let's see. We have several people that are um, monitoring the hearing uh, who are uh, volunteers with CASA. It's just starting up in Henry County. Uh, welcome. Um, Ms. Crowley is Ms. Schrock's assistant. Ms. Schrock is the attorney guardian at Lightham for the minor child, children, excuse me. Um, Prentice Moore is the case manager. Mr. Skoranek is the attorney for DFACS. Uh, Ms. Crane is the attorney appointed for the mother. Uh, Anisha Johnson. Is she, Ms. Johnson, turn on your camera, please. Thank you. Um, the, um, Ms. Henley Parks is a supervisor, as is Ms. Ishmael with DFACS, and they're just auditing the hearing. And Chris Burns is the putative father of the children, and he's on. He had difficulty with his connection when we were talking, when we first got online, and um, he is converted to his phone, which I don't like to do because I like to see people, but um, I'm afraid we wouldn't get through the hearing with his um for internet service. So we saw him, we know who he is and we remember him from the last hearing. So I'm gonna allow him to participate over the phone so we can have a better connection. Sean Taylor, ma'am, are you uh, a witness? Yes. Are you a witness? Yes. Okay. I, think I have a kid. I beg your pardon? I'm the grandparent. I have the children. Okay, the children are placed with you. Okay. Prentice Moore is the defects yeah. case manager. Uh, Destiny Robinson, are you also a case manager with defects? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. And I've got somebody, uh, first name Kiana. That's what? That's that's Miss Ellington, Your Honor. She's the supervisor for Miss Robinson. Okay. okay. Breakout, you indicated you had uh, several witnesses, Mr. Skobronik. Are your witnesses here? Your Honor, um, when we had the hearing on the 5th, I sent out another subpoena with a new Zoom link uh, to be served on Ms. Merrill, whom the mother was reported to be residing with. I do not have a return of service on that, but that's the only witness that I don't have here. My, as I indicated, um, Ms. Robinson, Mr. Burns, Ms. Mer uh, Ms. Taylor, and then uh, potentially the mom for Cross were being my witnesses. While we get started, can you um, can somebody um, be calling her and finding out where she is? Uh, if Ms. Uh, Parks or somebody can do that, yes, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Um, who are you calling first? So if I'm going to sequester witnesses. Um, so, Your Honor, Mr. Moore has got to leave for a bit. I don't know if he's going to come back or not, but I was going to potentially call him last if I needed him at all to clarify anything. But um, if he can be excused for a bit, he's got to go. I don't know where he has to be off to. Okay. Prentice, are you going to log back in when you did wherever? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, uh your Honor, I was going to call Mr. Burns first. Okay, Mr. Burns, hold tight. Right, Your Honor, I'm calling him for purposes of cross-examination since he is a party to this case. Uh, Mr. Burns, uh, you are the uh, alleged Mr. father. Correct. Yes, sir. Were you ever married to the mother, Anesia Johnson? No, sir. If, and I, you might have talked about this before at the other hearing and saying that the, you were doing this, but I could be confusing you with another case. So what I'm going to ask is, did you tell the court before when we were in court that you were in the process of trying to legitimate these children? Uh, yes, I was, but um, someone from DFAX told me that um, they were going to put me through the legitimation process, that I need to take a tiny test for both the kids. So they told me to hold off. But I uh, all right, but my my question is: You are in the process, but you have not actually legitimated either of these children in any court in the state of Georgia at this time, correct? No, sir, I haven't. Mr. Skabronik, hold on just a second. I've got to step out of the courtroom for just a minute. Okay, right. I'll be right back. 
Yeah. All right, Mr. Burns, I think my last question to you was about whether or not you've legitimated the children. You said you had, at this point you have not legitimated the children, correct? Yes, I have. Okay. Um, Burns, and, would you, Mr. Burns, please t speak up a little louder, either get closer to the phone or something, because I'm having trouble hearing you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> now, I want to ask you, um, the judge had asked you at the last hearing that we were in court on December 5th that these children have ever lived with you. And I believe you said at one point in time the children had lived with you about three or four months. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, it was a little bit more than that, but yes, they lived with me. And was that with Ms. Johnson or were the children just staying with you? No, they were, um, they, uh, at the time I was living with my mom, so they were living with me. Say that again. I said at the time I was living with my mom and they were living with me. Okay, so they were living with you, your mother, and um, no one else, correct? Yeah, no. All right. And where was Ms. Johnson, the mother at this time? Where, where, where was she that she was not living with the children? Uh, at the time, um, she, I believe in the beginning, she was in the, uh, mental, uh, mental place for a couple of weeks. And after she got out, I just had the kids. Okay. So after she got out of this mental health facility, do you know where Ms. Johnson was living? Uh, yes, in her apartment. Okay. Then why did, why did the children not return back? to the home uh, to live with Ms. Johnson in her apartment at that time. Do you know? Uh, she didn't, she didn't want me. I, I'm guessing she didn't want the kids at the moment, but she would still come over and see the kids and all that stuff. But she, right. I had the kids until she was ready to take them back. Can you tell me when this was? I mean, if you can't remember the exact uh, time, but like if you can like say in the spring of this year or last year, when was this that this happened where it's, the kids were with you and this your was, mother for three to four months. This was last year sometime. In 2022? It was last year. Yes, sir. Okay. If I'm, if I'm, yeah. All right. Would it have been before the 4th of July or after the 4th of July? Uh, Probably like right before. I'm thinking right before August. Okay. So... Okay. You're saying right before August? Yes, right before August, because I remember it was getting cold. All right, so that would have been after the 4th of July? Yes. All right. So the children started to live with you in August of last year until whenever? Yes. Okay. So if they started to live with you in August, did they leave and go back to live with Ms. Johnson before or after Christmas of last year? Uh, it would have to have been before Christmas of last year. Okay. So sometime between August and early December of 2022, the children were residing with you? Yes. All right. And how did the children come to stay with you? Did Ms. Johnson bring the children to live with you? Um, no. Uh, I was actually, um, I guess she was having one of our episodes, and I was actually bringing the kids over to my mom's house so I could take her to get whatever necessary help that she needed at the time. And when I came out the house, she was gone. So that's how me and the kids ended up staying. So the, just, you're not being real clear. So I, I'm just, I, I hate to have to keep repeating, but I'm, so you're saying that you were going to take the children, you went to pick the children up because Ms. Johnson was going to go into a mental health facility. And when you got to Ms. Johnson's apartment, she was not there. No, what I'm saying is, <clears throat> I was at the time me and Ms. Johnson were living together. When I had to, when she would have, when she was having her episode, I brought the kids to my mom's house because I didn't have nowhere to take them at the time because I was going to take her to go get help. When I took the kids in the house, I left her in the car. I come outside, she left. When she left, me and the kids stayed at my mom's house. She left. She was gone for a couple of days, and then she got put in a mental hospital. All right. Now That's how I ended up at my mom's house, and I ended up with the kids. And do you know why Ms. Johnson went into the mental health facility in 2022? You said, do I know why? Because of what? He was said, do I know why? Question. I'm sorry, Your Honor, you're both talking at the same time. He wanted to know if you were asking him why she left and went to the mental institution. 
That's exactly what I'm asking you, I guess. Why was she going to a mental health facility? Because I'm assuming from what I saw, I guess she was having a mental episode or a mental break. So that's where well, I'm assuming that's where she needs to go. Yeah. And what did you see that made you assume she was having a mental health break or a mental health episode back then? Uh, well, that morning, that morning we woke up, I had to go to work. She had Chloe and Nan. When I got dressed, I told them I'll see them later. She, and I told her, I told her something about Nan. She looked at me, looked at Nan, and she said, whose baby is this? After she said that, that's when I figured something was wrong. She started talking to herself and pacing back and forth. So that's when I knew she was going to one of her episodes. Okay. So she, this was with regards to the, um, uh... Your youngest child, uh, nine, she said she didn't recognize that child? Yes. How long have you and Ms. Johnson been in a relationship before, and I, I guess before that episode in 2022, how long had you all been in a relationship? Mm, I'm guessing off and on, probably like three years, okay. four years. And had the mother prior to that episode uh, where she went to the mental health facility in 2022, had she had uh, previous uh, behaviors that caused you concerns about her mental health during that time, those three years? Mm, yes, but yes, but uh, I didn't know nothing until she told me. Okay. And what did she tell you? That she had uh, mental issues. She was, um, yeah, she was basically told me she had mental issues. Was she taking any medications, to your knowledge, when you were living together for any kind of mental health treatment? Um, I want to say um, not while we were living together, but um, before she had nine, like um, before she got pregnant with nine, she was taking medicine. But then once, uh, but then, yeah, I guess she just stopped. But no, I haven't seen her take anything recently. So the last that you knew was that, that she was taking medications before nine was born? Yes. And that was in October of 2021 when that child was born? Yes. Did the mother ever tell you what she had ever been diagnosed with? Um, yes, but I don't remember the exact um, wording for it. When did you and Ms. Um, Johnson stop living together? Mm, about, I want to say about eight, nine months ago. So that would have been in this, that would have been sometime in April or May of 2023, correct? Yes. All right. So you said that before you, uh, had been living with your mother uh, after Ms. Johnson went back and went into the mental health facility. You were living with your mother and the children uh, for about three or four months. So when did you go back to living with Ms. Johnson? Uh, it had to be sometime before Christmas. I want to say like probably a week before or after my birthday. So my birthday is November 9th. So probably like a week before my birthday. Okay. And did the children then go back with you to live in the home with Ms. Johnson? Yes, they did. Okay. And then when you were living in the home with Ms. Johnson, what 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 was it that precipitated you from leaving the home? Why did you move out of the house with Ms. Johnson and the children? Uh, well, she wanted me to leave. Why? Uh, she didn't want me there. Uh, I guess uh, I guess in her eyes, I wasn't pulling my own weight. So she didn't want me here anymore. Okay. So when you left, the children remained in the home with Ms. Johnson? Yes. All right. She did you have taken. did you have visitation with the children during that time? Where you, after you had left the home in March or April of this year, uh, did you visit yes. with uh, the girl with the children? Yes. Okay. And how often did you visit? Uh whenever she would allow me to. So you didn't have a set schedule? No, I didn't. Have you ever paid any kind of child support to Ms. Johnson for the children? 
Mm, no. All right. All right. So now I want to go and focus on the um, where the department recently became involved with your uh, your children and Ms. Johnson and yourself um, on or about November 14th of this year. Do you recall that date? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. And at some point in time prior to that date, had Ms. Johnson left the children um, with you while she went to Brady Hospital? No. So she did not leave the children with you? Uh, if she, if you're talking about the night when I got the kids from when she was we with the cops, I don't know where she went that night. I took the kids. I don't know where the cops took her, so I don't know where she went, but I took the kids. All right, so let's go back and see if we can clarify for the court then, Mr. Burns. November 14th, DFAX comes out to your home uh, because of the fact that the mother uh, was uh, homeless and was not going to allow the children to stay with you and law enforcement had gotten called. You recall that, right? Yes. Okay. Were the children prior to that date, had they been living with you in the home of your mother here in Stockbridge? No. No. Had they not been living with you for any, uh, staying with you at, for any period of time while Liz Johnson was in the hospital? Uh, like, like, I'm, like, I, uh, like I said, if she, w if she went to a hospital, I don't know. All I know is that night that you're talking about, that's the night that they gave me the kids. And I gave them back the next morning. So wherever she went, I don't know. Okay. So you don't know. So prior to November 14th, the children had not been staying with you and your mother, correct? No. No. All right. All right. And do you know if Ms. Johnson went to Grady Hospital um, prior to that day? No, I do not know. Okay. Did you ever tell DFAX that, that Ms. Johnson had been hospitalized at Grady Hospital? Um, I, I don't remember the exact dates. I do know that she went, but I, I don't know the, the night when the cops came to where I live. That's not the night that if she would have went, that's not the night she went because she came and got the kids the next morning. Okay. So if she did go, she went prior to the 14th, not after the 14th. I understand that. That's what I was asking about, is if you knew if she went prior to the 14th to Grady yes, Hospital. prior to the 14th. Yes, but I don't, I don't know if she went to, I don't know the exact hospital, but I knew she went to one, yes. Okay. Where were the children when the mother went to the hospital? They were with me for a day. I'm sorry? They were with me. So they were with you for a day? Yes, for a day. Okay. When was that? Say what not say what now. I'm sorry. Can you say again? I didn't hear you. Hello? Yeah, I, I, I'm just going writing some notes, okay? So when the children were with you, how did the children end up with you for that day? Um, well, the police kept asking her if she wanted to give the kids to me. Um, she kept saying no. Um, eventually, they end up giving. She end up saying I can get the kids, and I end up getting them for that night. Yeah, but this was again before Defax was involved, right? Yes, this is before Defax was involved. Yes, she, uh, they were outside for about like a, about two hours. The cops kept asking if she wanted to get the kids to me. They got talking to her, and eventually, she said she would give me the kids, and I had them for that night. Do you know why the mother went to the hospital? No, I'm not sure. No. Did she? Did you talk to her at all? Uh, she wouldn't really talk to me. We spoke, but she kept telling me she didn't want me to take the kids. She just told you she wanted you to take the kids. Is that what you said? No, she said she didn't want me to take the kids. So when Defax got involved at your house on the 14th that night. Why was why was um, Ms. Johnson and the children, why were they at your home that night? Well, uh, I had the kids. I had the kids. I got off work, um, and she was trying to get the kids. I told her she'd come get them. Um, she caught an Uber over there to come get the kids. 
And um, the cops that she talked to prior to that told me that I had to give her the kids. So she came, she got the kids, and she didn't have anywhere to take them. So that's why the police got involved. She called the police there, and that's how defects got involved. Okay. So Ms. Johnson called the police because she wanted her children. Is that correct? No. No. She called the police because she wanted uh, two car seats that weren't mine. And uh, I told her I could give them to her because they weren't my car seats. So she ended up calling the police. All right. So I'm still not sure I'm understanding. Did you agree to give the children to Ms. Johnson and she called the police anyway? Is that what you're saying? No. No, I agreed to give Ms. Johnson, the, I, I agreed to give her the kids. When she showed up, she said she was going to take the kids. I said, fine. She asked, could she have two car seats? I said, the car seats are not mine. She got upset, and then she called the cops, and then that's how the police came. That's after she already had the kids. Yeah. Was there a discussion between you Defax and Ms. Johnson on the night of the 14th about Ms. Johnson allowing the children to stay with you until she could get some car seats for the children. Yes. All right. Did Defax ask Ms. Johnson if she would allow the children to remain with you? Yes. What was Ms. Johnson's response? Uh, her first response was no. Did she give a reason about why she didn't want the children to stay with you? Uh, multiple reasons. What were those reasons? Uh, one was she just didn't want the kids to stay with me. Another reason was she didn't like my mom. Um, and another reason was she thought we were going to try to take the kids from her. Okay. So she was picking the children up on the 14th, right? Mm-hmm. From your yes. home and your, and your mother's home? Yes. How long had they been there? Uh, like I said, the kids probably been there a day. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, probably a day because I, I worked that morning. And when I got off, she was coming to get the kids. Right. So are you saying that the children came to stay with you on her? Uh, the 14th was a Tuesday, right? If, if you, yeah, I'm not looking at a calendar right now, but yeah, I'm guessing, yeah. Okay, so you you got the children sometime on Monday the 13th, is that what you're saying? Yes, it had to be Monday, yes. Because okay. when she, yes, yeah, because she ended up, after that happened, she ended up getting the kids the next morning, around like 9 or 10. All right. At the time that the mother came to pick the children up from your home, on the 14th of November, and did Ms. Johnson have a place to live that you knew of? Not to my knowledge, no. When the children came to stay with you and your mother on the 13th, prior to that, where had the children and the mother been living, to your knowledge? Uh, she had an apartment. Okay. What happened to that apartment? Between the time, uh, go ahead. Uh, oh, you go ahead. I'm, I'm listening. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I said you go. Ahead. You go to finish. I'm listening. I wasn't making any noise. Are you aware of Ms. Johnson having been evicted from her former apartment? Yes, the day that she, the day that the eviction happened, that's the day that she told me. Okay. Do you know why Ms. Johnson was evicted from that apartment? I'm sure it's because she wasn't paying rent. Is that, are you just guessing or did Ms. Johnson tell you she hadn't been paying the rent? I'm just guessing. So my question again is, is did Ms. Johnson ever tell you why she had been evicted from the apartment? No. At the time that Ms. Johnson left the children to stay with you on or about the 13th of November, do you know if Ms. Johnson was employed? Uh, she said she was, but I'm not. Then again, she works from home, so I wouldn't. I honestly wouldn't know. 
when you said the Ms. Johnson reported she was employed, did she tell you where or what she was doing? She works from home. So, again, I, if she was working, I wouldn't know. Say that again. I'm sorry. Work from home? Yes, she works from home. But even if she was employed, then again, I wouldn't know. And you don't know what she was doing when she's working from home? Uh, the job she's previously done, she just answers calls and like customer service. But again, when she, whatever she was doing prior to that, I'm not sure. You said that you and Ms. Johnson had been separated or not living together for about eight or nine months, correct? Correct. All right. During those eight or nine months, did Ms. Johnson ever ask you for money to help pay for rent or food or anything like that? Yes. How often? Uh, I mean, as often as we needed it, uh, we had to feed kids, pay the bills. So I paid rent there. I paid the light bill there. Um, I fed the kids. I bought groceries there. Yeah. So during those eight or nine months that you uh, were living with your mom and that you had moved out of the home of Ms. Johnson, can you give a number of times to this court about where the mother might have asked you for assistance in paying bills, the rent, food, anything like that? How many times? She didn't. I don't remember. I don't remember her asking for. I don't remember asking anything for bills, but diapers and stuff like that. Um, probably like a handful of times. Okay, so what does a handful mean? Five times? Yeah, probably about a good five. And when she asked, did you provide her with money for those necessities for the children? Yes, or I would just send it on Walmart. And how much money would you provide to her? Uh, I wouldn't send her any cash. If I did send her, I wouldn't send her any cash. I would just send, I would just do a Walmart order and I would just send it on Walmart. Okay, so how much money are we talking about? Uh, a few hundred. All right. One what is a few? Probably hundred fifty dollars grocery. I'm sorry, say that again. How much is it? Like $100 or $150 worth of groceries or so, or whatever they need. All right. So would it, for those five times, would it have been about $100 to $150 each time? Uh, not necessarily. Uh, depends on if she just, whatever she asked me for. So if she asked me for diapers and wipes, I'll come over there. I'll bring diapers and wipes. But if I cannot make it over there, then that's when I would do the Walmart orders. But if I could make it over there, I would just take it over there myself. All right. So at some point in time, then going back to the November 14th, when the mother was trying to pick the children up from your home, where was she going to go and take the children? Do you know? No, I do not. Does, the, does Ms. Johnson have a car of her own? No, she doesn't. Was Ms. Johnson calling some sort of transportation like Uber or Lyft to take her and the children somewhere? Um, uh, I'm guessing. I'm not sure. I'm not. I'm not certain. Yeah. Did you not have a conversation with Defox and Ms. Johnson where the issue of her not having sufficient car seats for the Uber came up? Yes, I did. But you asked how did how did she get over there? I'm not sure how she got here. I'm not sure how she got to me. I didn't no, no. see her call an Uber or anything like that. That wasn't my question. My question was: Is did Miss Johnson have transportation for her and the children to take the children from your home? Right, and she kept saying an Uber, but like you again, I didn't see an Uber. I didn't see her call an Uber either. So again, I don't know. And even when she came to pick the kids up that morning, I didn't see her. I didn't. It, it was. It didn't seem like an Uber she was getting into that morning. So that's why I said I don't know. All right. So. When Ms. Johnson and you and DFAX had this conversation about there being insufficient car seats, was it your understanding that Ms. Johnson needed to have two car seats in order for her to transport the children away from your home? Yes, I knew that. Okay. And then at some point in time, did Ms. Johnson agree to allow the children to remain in your home until she could secure two car seats for the children? Yes, she did. All right. Then at some point in time later that 
that day on the 14th of November, that Tuesday, did Ms. Johnson come back to your home with car seats for the children? Yes, uh, Tuesday morning at like 9. I'm sorry, at what time? Yes, Tuesday morning around like 9 o'clock. Okay. I don't think I have any other questions for Mr. Burns, Your Honor. Ms. Crane, you have any questions? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Mr. Burns, in your testimony, you kept referring to my client and one of her episodes. How many episodes does Ms. Johnson have? I've personally only seen, I'll say I've personally only seen about three. Okay. And do you know where she lives right now? No, I do not. And you stated that you don't know what she does for work? No, I don't. Okay. And how old are your children now? Uh, Chloe is five, now it's two. Okay. So in the last five years that the oldest has been alive, um, have you had concerns about my client's ability to parent the ch child or the children? No, not until recently, no. Okay. That's all I have. The Rock? Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Burns, on that Monday, November 14th, when the mother showed up to your house to pick the kids up, um, do you recall about what time at night that was? Uh, it was late. Um, she called me about, I want to say this, the call started around like 1030. Uh, I think she didn't get to me until like 11 o'clock, 1130. Okay, so it was about 1130 when she got to your house. And then from the time she got there until the time she ultimately allowed the kids to stay with you that night. What time was that? Uh, I ended up taking the kids back in the house around like three o'clock. 3 a.m.? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so from about 1130 until 3 a.m., where were the children? Standing outside, uh, standing outside the front of the apartment with her. They were standing outside. Um, what can you describe, um, how, what the children's reaction to all of this was? Uh, well, they were cold. Um, they were cold and tired because I had to wake them up out of their seat to bring them outside to her. So they were cold, tired, and just ready to lay down. Were they upset? Yeah, Chloe was. At some point, did, were they crying at some point? Mm, no, not that I can really remember. Okay. Nah, All right. Nah, I started crying, but I thought he was tired. Okay. That's all I have. Redirect or recall no, from your initial. All right. Call your next witness. Your Honor, if you can bring uh, Ms. Taylor back into the room, please. Sure. And is Ms. Anesia Johnson your daughter? Yeah. Yes. And why you, Ms. Johnson is, is shaking her head that says, saying she's not your daughter. Why would she be doing that? I have the slightest idea. Okay. Your Honor, I just want the court to reflect and the record to reflect that when I asked that question, Ms. Johnson was vigorously shaking her head no, that she was, uh, as if to indicate she was not Ms. Taylor's daughter. Um, the uh, And uh, with regards to the uh, children, I want to ask you a, a couple of things. At some point okay. in time around November... 17th which i guess is a friday did ms johnson and the children come to your home yes did, why did ms johnson and the children come to your home on that date well i wasn't aware that they were coming to my home um she rang a doorbell i asked what did she want and she said that she wanted to drop the kids off I guess our conversation between her and her John, dad was Taylor, that before she got to my home. You're no, have to... Taylor, you're, you're breaking up on your connection, and we didn't hear yeah. what you just said. I don't know what it is. But oh, I'm sorry. 
if you if you try not to move your head as much, maybe because it seemed like when you started moving your head, that somehow or another the connection was breaking up. So, um, okay, I'm sorry. Can you say again why uh, did Ms. Johnson and the children come to your home? You said that you, you didn't know that they were coming, and then I lost the rest of it. Yeah, I didn't know they were coming. Um, her and her father had a conversation before she arrived to my home, and he indicated that he told her if she was to bring the kids to my home, that he will, for them to stay until she got somewhere to live, that he would give her um, money for another night at the place that she was staying. And I was like, okay. But again, I said, Anissa cannot stay here with me. The kids can, but she cannot. Okay. So, so let, me go back. let me just stop you there. And then I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. I want to be okay. clear. You were saying that your understanding was Ms. Johnson's father, and I'm assuming that's your former spouse? No, he's not a spouse, but he's her father. Okay. All right. So that's why I'm trying to clear up. So, but that would be the okay. children's maternal grandfather, correct? Correct. Okay. Correct. Miss, uh, what is his name? Anthony Johnson. Okay. Mr. Johnson had agreed to give the mother, Ms. Anesia Johnson, some money to find a place to live? Is that what your understanding was? No, she was already at a, I think she said a, a Airbnb. So he was going to give her money to continue to stay there until um, whoever she was supposed to be getting in contact with to, um, I guess, give her, her shelter or something like that. Okay. So what time did Ms. Johnson and the children come to your home on November 17th? I do not know what time it was, honestly. Okay. When did you find out that the children and Ms. Johnson were at your home? It was morning. It was before 12, I could say that much. I'm sorry? I think I came in contact with, it was before 12. I th think I came in contact with Miss Destiny a little after 12. All right. So before 12, before noon, Ms. Johnson and the children were at your residence. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Where were Ms. Johnson and the children? I mean, outside. physically, where were they? Physically outside. Okay. Were they in a car? Were they in the driveway? Were they sitting on your front porch? Were they just standing in the yard? Where were they? They were standing on my front porch. And did you have a conversation with Ms. Johnson about the children and her living with you at some point in time? No. I said the kids can stay, but Anisia cannot stay. Right, Those so are my, my exact words. So that's, again, that's my question, though, is did Ms. Johnson ask to stay with you and have her and the children stay with you? No, she asked, she said for the kids to stay. That was her agreement with her and her father, that the kids could stay here and she would leave. Okay, so Ms. Johnson asked if the children could stay and she would go somewhere else? Correct. Okay. And you were not willing to allow the children to stay with you, or you were willing to allow the children to stay with you? I was willing to allow the kids to stay with me. Okay. So I'm confused then, because Ms. Roberts uh, from the department, Robinson, had stated that there had been approximately five or six hours where there had been this going back and forth about whether or not the children would stay with you or not. Can you explain that? What was said was that when she asked about the kids staying, I say, yes, they could stay here, but Anissa could not. Then she was saying, oh, okay, so what about a nanny cam? I'm not allowing you to put a nanny cam in my home. So it was just a going back and forth thing about that. Ms. Taylor, I didn't understand. You said what kind of, a cam, some kind of cam? A, a nanny cam, cam a okay. camera or something okay. like that gotcha. was being okay. brought up. Yeah. That's what I thought and you I said. Him, I just no. wanted to make sure. You still have some static. In your... <laughs> I don't know if yeah. it's because you're using this headset or whatever, but it's not a good connection. But uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, okay, no worries. Um, 
I think after that, she was having conversations going back and forth about me allowing her to see the children. I say, you can see the kids. I have no problem with that. But you do have to realize you cannot pop up at the house at any given time because she has done that in the past where she will come to the house without the kids. 11, 12 o'clock at night, ring the doorbell, knock on the door constantly, just causing problems. Turning the water on, leaving out things of those natures, or just popping up when having me to call the EMTs to come and get her. So I said the kids could stay, but she cannot. I gave her the rules, the times for her to come which was the weekend, so I didn't mind her coming during the weekend. But again, we all, we sleep, we work. You just can't pop up at any given time. I said during the week, these are the times that you can call in the morning before 9 o'clock because I have to be to work. I can let them talk to you on my lunch break. I have no problem with that. And I have no problem with you talking to them after 6 o'clock or coming to see them after 6 o'clock. Okay, so she my was, understanding... She refused. So my understanding of what you're saying, Ms. Taylor, to correct me if I'm wrong, is that you were willing to allow the children to stay with you, but you didn't want the mother to stay with you and that you were also concerned about the mother just popping up unannounced to visit with the children. Am I basically summarizing that correctly? Correct. Okay. And I think you said that that was as a result of the children having lived with you before and the mother would pop up uh, unannounced to... You know, see no. the children. The kids were, I think, at the father's house, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I'm not for sure where the kids were at at that given time. Honestly, I don't. But she would pop up at the house. Uh, I can tell that she was not there. She was having an episode. So I would call the, MT, the EMTs to come and get her. Um, I think the last time this happened was in, oh gosh, June or July or something like that. The EMTs were called. Um, she wasn't verbal. She wasn't talking. I kept trying to get her attention. She still wasn't talking. By the time the EMTs got there, got here, they talked to her for a while. She wouldn't say anything. So when they walked up to her, because she was in the car, she walked up. They walked up to her, and she just jumped out and started screaming. And I had to calm her down in order for them to talk to her. They took her. Um, I think she was, um, she was submitted for a couple of days. I think it was less than 72 hours and they released her. When they released her, they came back. At that time, I only had Chloe, which is the oldest child. And the father had nine. And she came in the house. I told them that the only thing that she could do was get her stuff, which was a book bag, and leave. And they were going to take her back home. The father who bought Chloe to me was on his way to pick her up that day. And she just started threatening to shoot me. And she kicked my pet. Um, that's caused all kinds of issues. Called the police and told them that I was holding Chloe hostage. Um, so SWAT team and police showed up that day. So um, telling them the father brought Chloe over to me. He was on his way to get her. And they was telling me that regardless of what state of mind that she's in, by law, I have to give her the kid. And I understood that part, but he did not take Chloe with him. The father came and got her. And that was the last time I saw Anicia until that day she showed up at the house with my grandbabies. So you said this was in June or July of this year where this episode occurred? Correct. Yes. And then you, so, so from June or July until November, you did not see the mother of the children. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. And did Ms. Johnson, when she came and asked for the children to stay with you on the 17th, did she tell you why she wanted the children to stay with you? I mean, you know, why would she be coming to you and asking for the children to stay with you if she had a place for the children, for example? Um, Anicia has been going through an episode since May. Um, and she has not been. 
and I don't even know what words to even use. She hasn't been herself. I'm gonna say it like that. Okay, well, and me, what I'm getting at, Miss Taylor, though, she became, is, did she tell you uh -huh. that she didn't have a place to stay? Is what I'm getting at. Yes. Yes, she was homeless. Okay. And Mr. Burns testified that previously Ms. Johnson was living in an apartment with the children. Are you aware of that? Correct. All right. And do you know what happened to that apartment? Why Ms. Johnson was no longer residing in that apartment with the children? From what was said, she was evicted for non-payment. Do you know why Ms. Johnson was evicted from that apartment? Not payment. Uh, what about the rent? I'm guessing. Yes. Do you know if Ms. Johnson is employed? Um, she has a business, Skybury Solutions. Okay. It's um, she worked from home. All right. Do you know if she's actually making any money from that business? Um, that I don't know. Do you know where Ms. Johnson is residing currently? With Monique Merrow. I'm sorry? With Monique Merrow. Okay. Is that a relative? No. I'm sorry? Close friend of the family. No, close friend of the family. Just a friend of the family? Yes. All right. These children have been um, in your home since about November 17th, so a little over a month at this point. How are the children doing in your home? Oh, my God, they are doing so good. Chloe started school uh, for the first time. I, I thought she would be nervous. I was more nervous than she was, um, but she is loving it. Her, she has two teachers, Miss Anderson and Miss Mullins. Um, she refers to Miss Mullins as Miss Bella. So she's very excited. Had her very first Christmas party with the class. Um, and I talked to the teacher. They said she's doing absolutely wonderful. Good. She um, said the one not to have been ever been in school that she is really good. To your knowledge, since the children have been living with you on the 17th of November through now, has the mother had any visitation with the children during that time? She refused visitation. So she's not had any visits? No. And I know you had talked about some concerns about phone contact and things of that nature before. What about phone contact with the children? Has she had any of that? No. No? No. Are you aware as the mother of Ms. Johnson as to whether or not the mother has ever been formally diagnosed with any mental health issues? Yes. Do you know what those mental health diagnoses are? Um, psychosis, schizophrenic, bipolar. Um, I think those are the only... She does have a cyst on her brain, um, and they said from there, from one of the, um, a Grady, I took her to Grady, and they omitted her, and they did a CAT scan and other tests, and that's when they found out that she had a cyst on her brain that may have been causing her to have these episodes, and that it couldn't be removed. I think she had two appointments to have it done, but hasn't gotten it done. Um, they gave her medication to take. She hasn't been taking that medication. I'm sorry, did you say she's not been consistent on her medication? Correct. I even told her that they do have it where she can get injections um, monthly and she refused to do that as well. Do you know what medications other than the injections she's supposed to be on? If any, I cannot think of the name of it, but I think the last time I talked to her about it, she was telling me that it was, it cost too much for her to take it, I mean, to purchase it, but she received Medicaid, so Medicaid would pay for it. So I'm not for sure why she wasn't going to get it. She had the prescriptions, 
but she wouldn't go get filled. You had listed these diagnoses that you're aware of that Ms. Uh, had been reported as to Ms. Johnson having been diagnosed with psychosis, schizophrenia, and all of that. When was she diagnosed with that? Was she diagnosed with that as an adult, as a child, as a teen? When? As an adult, 2021. I'm sorry? As an adult, 2021. 2021? Yeah. Is that, is that what you said? I'm sorry. I thought you said 2021. Yes. That's what I'm yes. Okay. She started having the episodes in 2020, um, got diagnosed in... 21. Yeah. And do you have any concerns about Ms. Johnson's current ability to parent uh, the Chloe and Nine at this time? I do. And what are those concerns? I'm concerned that she will hurt them physically, mentally, and emotionally. And why do you think that she may harm the children physically or emotionally? She has, from what has been said by her daughter. So she has done that in the past? Yes. And what has she done in the past, specifically? I mean, I need you to be as specific as possible about what you know that Ms. Johnson may have done physically or emotionally to the children for this court to be able to take that into consideration. Um, Chloe has a scar on her face. And I asked her what happened, and she said that her mom slapped her, and she has a, a scratch on her face um, by her, her, scar. her chin, a scar. And okay. then um, she has a scar on her neck where she said her mom grabbed her and stuck her nails in her neck. And this is Chloe? This is Chloe. Okay. And have you, um, that you were gesturing um, just now, like the child is still has those marks on her. Are those something that you've actually seen? Yes. They're on her face, on by her chin, and the scratch is on her neck. And do those appear like they are old, that they're, I mean, healing? Like Can you old. Determine? Yeah. Oh, they're old. You talked about uh, concerns about Ms. Uh, Johnson's behavior towards the children emotionally. Can you give any examples of anything you may have observed about Ms. Johnson being uh, inappropriate verbally with the children? Now, she hasn't said anything to them mean in front of me. Well, like I said, I haven't seen her since June. No. I don't think I have any other questions for Ms. Taylor, Your Honor. Ms. Rock, do you have any questions? Uh, no questions, Your Honor. Ms. Crane? No questions, Your Honor. All right. Your Honor, I'm going to call Ms. Robinson then. Yeah, Ms. Taylor, you're, um, you can leave if, unless um, that you're welcome to stay. Okay. Right. If you're the caretaker for, temporarily for the kids, you might want to stay if you can. All right. Okay. Can we have a five minute break and uh, so before I call Ms. Robinson? Dang, she in school. Oh my gosh. Ain't that crazy? When is this work over? I'm suing for emotional distress. Just saying. And no, I'm not going to act crazy. I'm just going to get a lawyer. Like she said, I got a business. So. Two years of statute or whatever. That's why I need a lawyer. Oh, not the city, the county. I'm suing Henry County. I don't know what, what, um, the geological, whatever. But yeah, that is crazy. Y'all just took how? How is she getting in school without no birth certificate or social? 
So she just in there doing what? On who time? With who money? She getting free lunch? Oh, I guess it's not free since I, you know. Oh, okay. Wow. Wow. And I'm unfit. Everybody. You should Google me. Anisia Johnson. I wrote some stuff about abuse. So they want to sit here and lie. All that sexual stuff came later. What happened in 2020? Wow. What I call it in apartment? I call it the year of non-commitment. I guess everybody picked. I saw that outside too. And no, I'm not crazy. I'm not talking to myself. Everybody muted but me. So, hey. Oh, shit. Yep, free thug. Did you make contact with those children on or about November 14th, 2023 at the residence of Christopher Burns? Yes, sir. Is that address located in Henry County? Yes, sir. At the time that you made contact with the family at that residence, were the children located at that residence? Yes, sir. And were the mother and Mr. Burns at that residence? Yes, sir. Tell the court why the department became involved with the family on that day. Um, a report was called in by. Oh. You don't 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 say who made the referral. A, a report Just was called in. The me. report came in. <laughs> Um, due to the children standing outside in the cold um, and mom not letting the children go upstairs with their father, um, the police had said that they had been out there for about two hours. Uh, the when I got to the residence, the police had said they were there for about two hours. Um, and it was cold outside. Um, they just wanted to make sure that the children had a place to sleep. All right. What time did you uh, make contact with the family at the residence of Mr. Burns? Um... I want to say it was closer to 1.30 a.m. that morning. Okay, this would have been on the morning of November 14th? Yes, sir. All right. When you got to the residence, did you have a conversation with Mr. Burns and with Ms. Johnson? I did, but I spoke to them both separately. Okay. What did Mr. Burns report to you about why the children were at the home and why the department was involved um, at that time? Um. He said that Ms. Johnson had came to get the children, um, but she didn't have um, car seats to transport them. Um, and since he did not give her the car seats, she called the police. Um, when I spoke with her, she was saying that she could get the children somewhere, but she just needed car seats. Um, and I want to say that's why the report was called in, because she just didn't have a means to transport them. Um, to go somewhere for the night. So was it your understanding that the children had been residing with Mr. Burns for some point in time prior to your arrival to the residence? Yes, sir. And what, from your investigation, did you determine as to how the children had come to stay with Mr. Burns? Um, I was told that mom had went to checked into Grady for her mental health and that the children were only supposed to be staying with dad until she got checked out until she checked out from um, Grady. Um, but I'm not sure how he came to obtain the children. I just know that she left them there when she went to Grady for her mental health. You heard Mr. Burns' testimony that the children had only been with him for about a day. Was that what's what was reported to you when you were out at the home, or had they been there for some period of time longer than that? Um, I was told that they got there on Saturday. Um, By whom? I'm not entirely sure. I remember they said they were there since Saturday, but I don't remember who told that to me. Would that have been either Mr. Burns or Ms. Johnson that would have disclosed that to you? I want to say, I, I might be wrong, so I don't want to say the wrong thing, <laughs> but I think it was Mr. Burns' mother, Ms. Ashley Burns. Okay. So what did Ms. Johnson report to you, if anything, about her having been hospitalized at Grady? She has said she just discharged from Grady. Um, I had told her um, I would need a picture of her discharge papers if she had them. Um and she let me take a picture of um, the paper 
it said that she was discharged and on the front sheet it had said schizophrenia. So I'm going to assume she was in for that. What, if anything, did Ms. Johnson tell you how long she had been at Brady? From when to when? Mm, I know the only thing I she told me was she checked out that morning. Well, Monday morning, because it was Tuesday at this point. And she didn't she didn't or couldn't tell you when she went to Grady. She didn't. Did Ms. Johnson report to you that she had left the children in the care of Mr. Burns um, with her going to the Grady Hospital? Yes, sir. And how did that, from your investigation, how did that exchange work? Did Mr. Did Ms. Johnson bring the children to Mr. Burns? Did he go and pick the children up from someplace? How did that happen? Do you know? I'm not entirely sure. No. All right. Did at the time that you came out to the residence, did Ms. Burn, uh, excuse me, Ms. Johnson have a vehicle for herself and the children? No, sir. So how was she going to take the children um, away from the home of Mr. Burns? She kept saying that she was going to call an Uber. And as part of her uh, calling an Uber, was she required to have appropriate car seats for the children? Yes, the police wouldn't let her leave unless she had proper car seats for the children. And you had said something before about Ms. Johnson said she didn't have car seats and that Mr. Burns wouldn't let her have car seats. Did Mr. Burns actually have car seats for the children? I was told that he did, but I never saw them physically, no. All right. So during your conversations with Ms. Burn, Mr. Burns and Ms. Johnson, did you have discussions about the children staying in the home of Mr. Burns while Ms. Johnson went to obtain appropriate car seats for the children? Yes, sir. Tell the court about that discussion. What, what did you guys discuss? So I spoke with Ms. Johnson and she had said that she didn't want the children left alone with the paternal grandmother, Ms. Ashley Burns. And she said that Walmart opens at 7 a.m. and that um, dad had to go to work at 6 a.m. So that would have left an hour gap, more or less, for the children to have been left alone with Miss Burns. So she didn't want the children left alone. I went and talked to dad and I explained to him, hey, do you think you can go to work a little bit later so the children aren't left alone with your mother? Because that's the issue with mom not wanting to leave the children. He said, that's fine. Um, mom said that that was okay. She got the children out of the back of the police car and said that they could go upstairs with their father. Um, and she said that she was going to go to Walmart when they first opened in order to get car seats to come pick the children up later on that morning. All right. So you said a girl arrived at 1.30. How long until you got this agreement where their mother would leave the children with Mr. Burns and go to Walmart? I'm not really sure. I don't think it was a whole hour yet, but I'm not entirely sure. Okay. Did Ms. Johnson ever give you any reasons as to why she did not want the children to stay in the home of Mr. Burns and his mother and allow Mr. Burns' his mother to supervise the children alone? Could you repeat the question? I'm sorry. What reasons, if any, did Ms. Johnson give you about not wanting the children to be left alone with Mr. Burns' his mother? She stated that she likes to take over situations. Um, so she was saying like, since the time the police had got there, she was talking to the police and saying all this stuff about her. Um, and she was just like, she does, she didn't like that Miss Burns character was like that. I'm guessing it was more so she didn't like the way that Miss Burns acted. Um, in that instance, in one instance. So nothing specific about the children being, you know, unsafe with the Mr. Burns' mother? No, sir. Okay. All right. So at some point in time, then, uh, Ms. Burns allowed the children, uh, Ms. Johnson allowed the children to stay with Mr. Burns. She would go to Walmart. And what did you all agree to about after that? Um. I had to visually see the car seats. So um, I got up that next morning and met um, the family at uh, Mr. Burns' apartment. I had to see the car seats to ensure that she had car seats for the children to leave in. Um, and then I also needed um, verification that she had got an Airbnb for the following nights for her and the children to stay in. 
So were you able to verify the Airbnb? Yes, sir. I have a picture of the confirmation. And with the Airbnb, for what like time frame had you uh, gotten verification that she had that place for herself and the children? She got it from Tuesday night to Friday morning. Okay. And then she had the car seats? Yes, sir. And then did you let Ms. Uh, Johnson and the children leave the residence at Mr. Burns? Yes, sir. They got into an Uber. All right. Did you at some point in time also have a discussion with Ms. Burns about meeting with you at the Department of Family and Children's Services? I'm sorry, can you say that again? Did you also have a discussion with Ms. Johnson about meeting with you at the department? Yes, sir. And when was that to take place? That was to take place right after she had left Mr. Burns' apartment. Um, I got to the office at about nine o'clock that day. She was already standing outside. Okay. And did you have a meeting with Ms. Johnson at that time? Yes, sir. Did you discuss and provide to Ms. Johnson referrals or information about where she could potentially obtain housing for herself and the children on a longer term basis? Yes, sir. I gave her a transitional housing packet. Okay. During the time that you had um, initially met with Ms. Johnson and during the time that you were at the department, did you have any concerns about Ms. Johnson's behaviors during any of those two uh, initial contacts? No, sir. Okay. All right. So, so this uh, meeting at the department was Tuesday morning at around 9 a.m. What happened after that? The family was standing outside um, the department um, with all of their belongings. Um, mom had came inside the department for something and um, she had text she had either texted me or called me and said somebody stole her car seat from outside of the front of the building. Um, when I got that text, I was not currently in the office, but when I had got back to the office, I found our administrative assistant and explained what happened to her and she gave me a car seat to um, let the family use. Let me go back for a second before I get to my next question that I was going to ask you about that. Um, what did Ms. Johnson report to you about why she and the children had to stay in an Airbnb? I mean, why did they not have an apartment or a house or any kind of sort of permanent residence? What did she tell you about that? She did state that she had got evicted from her um, previous apartment. And did she tell you when that occurred? If I'm not mistaken, she said November 8th of 2023. Did she give you a reason as to why she had been evicted from that apartment? No, sir. After you came back to the DFAX office and resolved the issue about the car seat, when was the next time that you had any contact with Ms. Johnson? I called her. Wednesday night to ensure that they got there. She did not answer the phone. I called her on Thursday as well. She did not answer the phone. The next time I had a conversation with Ms. Johnson was Friday morning, the 17th. Okay. And how did you become involved with Ms. Johnson and the children again on November 17th? Um, she was saying that their time at the Airbnb was almost up and she needed somewhere to go. Um, I know she was given resources for the Haven House. Um, so she had told me that I needed to call. She said that she had called them, but they had said I needed to call. So when I called them, they said that she needed to call. So I put it on a three-way three -way chat. They did an assessment with Ms. Johnson um, and determined that she wasn't eligible for to come stay in the Haven House. Um, so I was asking her about other options that she might've had. And she said that her dad had told her he would give her the money to um, stay in a hotel or Airbnb if she took the children to her mother's house. Um, she had called me when she got to her mother's house and said that she had been standing outside and her mom had saw her but did not open the door. Um, I asked her to send me the address and um, I went to Miss Taylor's house, uh, the grandmother's house, to um, see if she would allow the children to stay. And if so, I was going to write up a safety plan and um, 
we were going to try and put a voluntary kinship agreement in place for the children to stay with the maternal grandmother until Ms. Johnson got stable housing. All right, let's go back. You said that Ms. Johnson uh, uh, called you and said that she had been standing outside the home of Ms. Taylor's home um, and that Ms. Taylor saw them and wouldn't let them into the house. When was that phone call? Do you recall the time that that was? I don't know if you give me a second, I can check. 11.38 a.m. 11.38? Yes. A.M.? Yes. All right. And then you said you went out to the home of Ms. Taylor uh, to meet with uh, the mother and the children. What time did you arrive at the home of Ms. Taylor? I got to Ms. Taylor's house at 12.58 p.m. And just to go back, when you had talked to that uh, initially on that phone call at 11.38 with Ms. Johnson, how long did Ms. Johnson say she and the children had been at the home of Ms. Taylor? Um, I want to say about 20 minutes. I also want to go back to the initial day that you talked about. You had mentioned something when you were answering my previous question about a safety plan. Had you had a previous safety plan that you had put in, into place with the mother and the children? Yes, sir. So the previous safety plan stated that the mother would let her children stay with their father until she obtained car seats and proof of um, where she was going to take the children once um, she obtained car seats. Okay. All right. When you got to the home of Ms. Taylor, at, you said at around 12.58 uh, p.m., where were the mother and the children at the time that you arrived? They were standing outside of Ms. Taylor's front door. All right. Did you have a conversation during that time with Ms. Taylor and Ms. Johnson about the children staying with Ms. Taylor? Yes, sir. Tell the court about Ms. Johnson's response to that. Um, she stated that she wanted a nanny cam in the home. She had also asked uh, Ms. Taylor who all was staying in her home. Um, then she said that she would still like to be able to see her children. Um, Ms. Taylor had said that all of those things she was not going to agree to because it was her home. Ms. Johnson had got irate. Um, she started cussing out her mother. Um, Ms. Taylor had looked at me and she said, um, I'm sorry. Um, she said, as I said, the children can stay here. She can't, but please get her off my property. And she closed the door. After Ms. Taylor closed the door, Ms. Johnson got upset and started ripping things off of Ms. Taylor's front door, knocking things over, and then she kicked Ms. Taylor's front door. And so, so initially, Ms. Johnson wanted all of these conditions put into place for the children to stay with Ms. Taylor. Am I understanding that correctly? Yes, sir. And then Ms. Johnson, uh, got upset with Ms. Taylor. Ms. Taylor shut the door. What happened after that? Um, she started picking up her things and bringing them towards my car. My car was parked on the street. And she said she didn't know if her mother was going to call the police. So she was trying to move her things from in front of her mother's door. Okay. Did you then have further conversations with Ms. Taylor and Ms. Johnson about the children remaining in the home of Ms. Taylor? Yes, sir. Did at some point in time you put into place a second safety plan wherein the children would remain in the home of Ms. Taylor? I started to. Um, Ms. Taylor had said that she would agree to Ms. Johnson's terms. Um, so I had begun to, and then she was like, I just really don't want them to stay. So we never actually got the second safety plan written up or anything because she kept going back and forth on if she wanted the children to stay with Ms. Taylor or not. Uh, did you ask the mother if she had any other relatives or fictive kin for the children to remain with other than Ms. Taylor or Mr. Burns? I did. And she said no. So she didn't identify any other individuals? No, sir. Um, how long would you say you had been out to the home of Ms. Taylor trying to work out some kind of an agreement for the children to either stay with Ms. Taylor or with somebody else? About five hours. And during that time, did Ms. Johnson have any food or water or feed the children to your knowledge? 
No, sir. Um, right before we left the home, Miss Taylor had sent out water for the children. Um, but aside from that, no, sir. And did Ms. Johnson allow the children to drink the water that Ms. Taylor had sent out? She let them have a sip, but she said that they needed to save it for wherever they were going to go next. I, th I thought you had testified back at the preliminary hearing about Ms. Taylor having concerns about Ms. Johnson. I mean, Ms. Taylor having put something in either the food or in the water uh, that she was uh, providing to the, the children or to the mother. Am I, am I misremembering that? Yes, sir. So Ms. Johnson had said she didn't know what her mother was going to do to any food or drink that she gave her or her children. Um, so she said that she didn't want her mother to send out any food. Um, and then when Ms. Taylor had said she'll send out water, the um, Ms. Johnson had said, could you at least take the labels off? She had asked, could we take the labels off the water before we gave it to them? So what was Ms. Johnson's plan for herself and the children if the children would not stay with Ms. Taylor? Um, she didn't have one. Did you also attempt to, during this time, contact any, for lack of a better term, shelters that would be willing to take the mother and the children as a possible alternative placement for the mother and the children? Yes, sir. Were you successful in finding anyone that was willing to take the mother and the children? No, sir. Did you ever have any discussions with Ms. Taylor, excuse me, Ms. Johnson, about the children going back to the home of Mr. Burns? Yes, sir. What was Ms. Johnson's response to that? Ms. Johnson's response was that her daughter had previously told her about Mr. Burns' oldest son doing something inappropriate, and she did not want Mr. Burns' oldest son coming to the home if her children were going to be there. Um, so when I had called Mr. Burns and told him that, he said that, that was okay, but I would have to contact his mother and explain that to her. And when I called her to explain that to her, she said she cannot tell me who can be in my home. And I said, yes, ma'am. And that was the end of that conversation. And that was Mr. Burns's brother? Mother, Miss Burns. No, no, that supposedly had the inappropriate contact. Um, Mr. Burns' oldest son. Okay, other child. Yes. Okay. During the time that you went out to Ms. Uh, Taylor's home to meet with the mother and the children. And did you have any concerns about the children and or the mother's hygiene or appearance? Yes. Yeah, so when I got to the home, um, the oldest child, Chloe, she had peed on herself. Um, the, the younger child, nine, he didn't have on, he had on pants, but they were adult pants. Um, and Miss Johnson had an odor. What about the children? Did they have an odor as well? Chloe smelled like urine. Um, so, so did nine um, because his diaper was full or his pull up. Did the mother have a uh, change of diapers for nine? Yes, sir. And she didn't, she had not changed the child's diapers? She did change him. I don't want to give you the wrong time, but she did eventually change him. Yes, sir. But at the time that you initially made contact with Nine, he had a strong smell of urine about him? Yes, sir. And you never, did you ask Ms. Johnson why she had not changed the child's diapers at that point? No, sir. Did Ms. Johnson have a change of clothing for Chloe to, you said she had urinated on herself. Did she have a change of clothing for that child? No, sir. You said that Ms. Johnson moved some of their items off of the porch. What items did she actually have with her? She had a basket and it had a computer monitor in it. She had um, two black book bags. Um, she had some pull-ups for um, nine. And that's all I can remember. So no clothing for herself, for Ms. Johnson? No, sir, not that I could tell. No clothing for either of the children other than the pull-ups? Correct. No food? No, sir. 
No water, no beverages, no anything? No, sir. Did you observe the children to have appropriate shoes? No, sir. Neither of the children had shoes on. Did you ask Ms. Johnson if she was employed during your uh, involvement with her? Yes, sir. Did she provide you with any evidence of being employed? No, sir. She said she had her own business, um, but that was the extent of it. Right. Did you at some point in time attempt to work with the mother about finding the mother and the children a hotel for where they could stay uh, for, you know, the next couple of nights? Yes, sir. Tell the court what happened with regards to that. My supervisor called me and she said that our county director allowed for us to get some petty cash from um, defects in order for the mom and the children to get hoteling for that night and then the next morning our administrative assistant would go get some money from the bank and we could add another night for the mom and the children to stay in a hotel. Um, so I put the mom and the children in my car. I came back to the DFAX office in order to get the petty cash. Um, I went to a few hotels. Some of them, we just didn't have sufficient funds as far as the security deposit and things that they wanted. But when I had finally found a hotel that was within the budget that I um, that we had and didn't require a security deposit. Um, they were asking for a credit card just to hold the room because a lot of people had been calling that night. Um, they had also asked for somebody to put down their ID for the room um, and mom refused to do both. And she had asked me to put either my ID down or my debit card to hold the room. And what reasoning, if any, did Ms. Johnson give you as to why she was not willing to do the credit card, the ID, that kind of thing. She said that she's a victim of domestic violence and, well, no, she said she's a survivor of domestic violence and they would come find her. Did she ever identify who they were? No, sir. Uh, during the time that you were in the car or with the children and the mother, did you observe the mothers uh, to be um, verbally abusive towards the children? Yes, sir. What did you observe? Um, the mother and the children were all in the back seat of my car. I'm not sure what um Chloe had said to Miss Johnson, but she had started yelling "f you" to her daughter. Um, you ruined my life. You and your dad ruined my life. I wish I never had you. Um, and this went on for about ten minutes. Um, and that caused the concern for me. And this was to Chloe. Yes, sir. How did the child react to the mother uh, basically berating her? She didn't say anything. At some point in time, did the department then ask for the uh, children to be placed in the temporary custody of the Department of Family and Children's Services? Yes, sir. All right, and did you uh, request the assistance of law enforcement um, with regards to the placement of the children into the custody of the department? Yes, sir. Did the mother uh, go to an altercation with law enforcement after you advised her that the children would be coming into the temporary custody of the department? When law enforcement arrived and I had told them that one of the car seats belonged to DFAX, um, she had got, um, she had started telling the officer not to touch her belongings because he was going to pick up the car seat and put it in my car. Um, so um, when he went to pick up the car seat, first she kind of, um, she kind of lunged at him and then he had said, I advise that you not do that. And then she had kind of, when he had picked up the car seat, she kind of swung her body at him. And that is when he detained her. Was she arrested or charged with anything for as a result of that? No, sir. Um, the officer had told me before I had left that he was only going to keep her in there until I pulled off. During the time that you've been involved with the mother, starting from the 14th of November through the date of the removal on the 17th of November, did you have any discussions with Ms. Johnson about her mental health history? The only time I did was that first day, which was the 14th, when I got the picture of the release from Grady and those things. That was the only time we ever talked about it. And what, if anything, did the mother report to you as to ever having previous mental health diagnoses? 
Mm, nothing. She did. I'm sorry. She did. Okay. Um, and is the department asking for continued temporary custody of these children at this time? I'm not sure. That's fine. I can ask uh, Ms. Parks or another uh, someone else about that. That's no problem. What was her answer to that question? Her answer to that question was, I'm not sure. I'm going to ask oh, someone else that question, Your Honor. Okay, I didn't hear it. I didn't. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. Um, no other questions for Ms. Uh, Robinson, Your Honor. Mr. Burns, you don't have a lawyer here with you today. Do you have any questions you want to ask? No. Okay. All right. Call your next witness. Uh, Your Honor, I was going to call Mr. Moore, but it doesn't look like he's signed back on. So I'll just do Ms. Uh, Parks real quick then, if I can. Did you find the um, the witness, Merritt, Merrill? Um... Uh, Your Honor, I don't know. I don't know if Ms. Parks had been able to reach her or not. Monique uh, Merrill, M-A-R-R-O-W. Correct. Mr. Prentice Moore, the case manager for those children. Yes. Uh, I just wanted to ask, uh, because Ms. Robinson wasn't able to answer this question, does the department, is the department asking for continued temporary custody pending a uh, final disposition hearing in this matter? Yes. Do you know if, um, do you have any knowledge as to whether or not the mother, Ms. Johnson, has had any visitation with the children since their removal on November 17th, 2023? No, she has not. And I, I don't know if Mr. Moore would could even answer. Do you know if Mr. Moore has been to where Ms. Johnson alleges that she is currently residing? Has he been able to make contact with her at that home? No. Has Mr. Moore, since he has been the case manager, to your knowledge, been able to make any contact with Ms. Johnson? No. And then did the Department of Family and Children's Services have a uh, mental health evaluation scheduled with Dr. Andrew Gothard for the mother last Thursday? That's correct. And did, to your knowledge, did the mother undergo that assessment? No, she did not. Um, the court had ordered at the preliminary hearing that the mother be permitted to have supervised twice weekly visitation with the children. Is the department uh, okay with that at this time? Yes, but mom is refusing. And what about with regards to Mr. Burns? Does the department have any objection to Mr. Burns having supervised visitation with the children? No. Other questions for Ms. Parks, Your Honor? Ms. Crane, do you have any questions? No, Your Honor. Ms. Schrock? No, sir. Well, I need to hear from Mr. Moore about the, she's just saying he hasn't been able to reach mom, but I want to know more about what efforts he made. So at this time, Your Honor, we um, have reached out to mom on several occasions. She's refusing to uh, make contact with us. And then also, um, we really don't really know exactly where mom is at. Um, I did reach out to Miss Mayor Manor. I don't think I'm saying her name correctly. Her uh, phone is currently disconnected. So you Ms. Merrill is the last person you know that she stayed with? Yes, but as I said, her number is currently disconnected. Okay. Well, has the mother given an explanation why she's not staying in touch? She says, I don't want to talk to you. I don't feel well. Does she say anything? Well, during the last court hearing, she did state for the record that she would not have any contact with the agency. She did say if we reached out through text messages, she would read the text, but she would not respond. So she held true to her word. Yes, she did. Okay. All right. Well, when when were you expecting Mr. Um, Moore to be back? 
he just sent me a text message saying that he was um finishing up. So I'm assuming he's going to try to log back in within the next couple of minutes. Okay. Well, I just, he's the case manager and there may, there may be other information the lawyers may want to ask him about. Um, do we have anything else we can take out while we're waiting for his hopeful uh, soon return? Not for me, Your Honor. I don't have any other witnesses, so I don't know if Ms. Crane or the Guardian have any witnesses or Mr. Or Mr. Are you Burns. asking to, to continue the case for Ms. Merrill, or are you going to put your case up without her? No, Your Honor. That's. I think the department has presented sufficient evidence for the court to find clear and convincing evidence of dependency. Um, so, yeah, I think we're, we're fine. Okay. Uh, Ms. Crane, do you have any evidence or testimony? I'll call Ms. Johnson. Okay. Go ahead. Ms. Johnson, have you been sworn in? Well, uh, sorry. Yeah. Wait, I don't know who's talking. Your lawyer is talking to you. Oh, okay. Yeah, I ain't never heard her voice. Since outside of court, we don't speak on the phone. Ms. Johnson, have you been sworn in? Yes, I have. Okay. Ms. Johnson, can you tell the court where you live right now? In a house. Miss Merrill's house. Okay. And in your house, do you have bedrooms set up for your children? Yes. Okay. And are you able to provide the department with access to the house so they can come see where the children will live? Could I do? I, I don't want to, but I could, yes. Okay. Have you provided any photos of the children's rooms set up, their furniture, things like that? No. Okay. What do you have available for the children to come live with you? Money, food, a mom, a mother, a caregiver, um, a business, uh, and a mom. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the last part. And what? And a future. Okay. okay. And Ms. Johnson, um, have you provided your proof of income? Yes, I have. I emailed it to you or your staff, and I also emailed it to Miss um, or Mrs. Robertson. Okay. And the proof of income that you sent, ma'am, what was it? It's um money for poor people. I'm poor. Okay. 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 I'll I'll stop being no, because I don't understand why I'm here. Okay. Um, it's for needy families, needy women. That's what it is. Is it a program? It's a program. Now? Yes, in her hands. You can Google it. You can look on the news. I don't sell drugs. Um, I don't. I'm I'm black, so you know, trauma, you know, abuse, all that good stuff. Okay. And how often do you receive funds from this program? I, oh, I'm sorry. Say that again. How often do you receive funds from this program? Monthly. And how much do you receive each month? $850.00 exactly. Okay. And how, how do you receive that? I get a deposit. Okay. So it's a direct deposit into your bank account? That is correct. Have you provided your bank statements to show your income? I provided a deposit and also the proof that yeah my bank statements that means i feel like y'all gonna be in my business and it's not y'all money to be telling me what to do with my stuff um so but i did provide deposit um okay, who did deposit you proof and also the program's proof of my signature and the director's signature as well okay and who did you provide the deposit proof to oh miss or mrs robertson Robin, Robin, Robinson. I'm so sorry. Not that sorry. And is that the only income you have? Um, I have food stamps. I guess it's not income, but they don't eat. Okay. You previously testified that you own a business. Do you have any income from that business, ma'am? Not currently, no. Okay. I'm not hiring. I'm trying to be a mother right now. So, okay. Thanks for stopping my business. Oh, not you. I'm so sorry. It's not you, it's the county. Y'all saw it in the chat. I'm suing. Oops, sorry. Yeah, oh no, I'm a little happy now, but that I a little happy now. I was toe up the first time, crying and everything. 
what is the name of, of the lady that you live with? Her name is Miss Mara. Okay. And is Miss Mara okay with the children coming to stay there? Yes, she is. How many bedrooms are in the home? More than two. Seven? Excuse me? How many more than two, ma'am? Enough for my children. Okay. I, I said I would, I could get them to come in here to see. I don't understand why you want to be in her business so much. I'm not trying to be rude. And can you tell me what assessments have you completed for the department so far? Um, the email that I sent to you or your staff, um, it was a psychological one. It said it would be to the defects office and was it, I think it was like 14. It should have been here today. Um, so I'm pretty sure that's why we had to do this hey, meeting. Me. Early so that Ms. Johnson, I'm gonna, Ms. Johnson, I'm going to ask you again. I'm going to ask you again. What assessments you've completed, ma'am, because I did see the email okay. that you sent and it did not tell me that you took any. So I'm going to ask you to please tell the court what assessments you completed for the department. The psychological one. And I also had um, one done on my own. And I sent you proof of that as well. It was a mobile um, mental crisis, you know, so I can get my head together. I just lost my kids. What are you expecting me to do? Go to the club? Party? It's not me. I can barely get off this couch. Why am I happy? It's look like it's coming to an end and I'm going to sue you. So. Oh, sorry. Our, shit. Um, he got to oh, no, watch. Did Dr. Gothard's office try to reach you about doing an assessment with Dr. Gothard last Thursday? Did, did who? The, there was a doctor Dr. Gothard, uh -huh. and did he reach out to you or did his office reach out to you about doing an assessment last Thursday? Uh, hold on. Doc, somebody, Dr. Gothard. Uh, I don't think that's his name, but I had one December 4th at 1 p.m. Dr. R.S., the lady who was e sending me text messages, her name was Kenna. Or Kina, I don't know. I have an email and phone numbers. Did you do an assessment um, last Thursday with the doctor? It wasn't office? Thursday. It was. Wait, hold on. Let me look at the calendar. Look, I got. It was on a Monday. It was not on a Thursday. It was on a Monday. And have you maintained contact with the case manager for your case? Have I done what? Have you talked to your case manager? No. Well, this, except for when we was texting and then it seemed like some, it seemed very argumentative. So I felt like I had to do my own thing. So I just sent her the proof because I called you incompetent and I just, it was the truth at that time. Do you know when the report from the psychological that you had on your own, when that report's going to be available? I have no idea, but the email said it should be here today because it said calendar day is not business day, so the weekend should have counted. Okay, would that be the email that you sent me about the assessments from the department? That is correct. Okay, but I asked you about the assessment that you said you had on your own. Okay, my bad. Go ahead. Can you repeat that, please? Yes. Do you know when the report will be available? from the assessment that you had on your own? I sent you a picture of it. Of the report? Yes, that wasn't even my handwriting. Okay, so I didn't receive a report. Maybe, what, what was it? It was an assessment? What was it? it? Well, I do have a question. What does my mental health have to do with me being a mother? If I have income and also a roof. Just answer the questions as best you can. Miss Johnson. You don't oh, to okay. Because I had a question about something else. But I'll Ms. Johnson, in. if the children come to live with you uh, where you are now, what school will Chloe mm -hmm. attend? She will be homeschooled.
And what grade will she be in? She'll be in first grade. No, kindergarten. She's five. So we're going to do, we're going to do K through one. Yeah, yeah. She's going to be in first grade. She knows how to write her names in capital letters. She knows how to do it in lower case, lowercase letters too, but it depends on if she's upset with me or not. Okay. And you'll be conducting the home She doesn't write them backwards. Will for you, attention. Oh, I'm sorry. Will you be conducting the homeschool classes? Will I, yes, I will. And if I cannot, I will hire someone too. How I will go to work, I have a business. If $850 is not enough, I'm aware of that. And I don't do fraud. I will let the food stamp office know. Okay. And um, if the children are able to return to you, and where, what town are you staying in? Uh, town? What is? What do you mean? Town is that like county or city? Well, ma'am, I asked you where you're living, and you won't give us the address. So, what city? I got served in? at the address, ma'am. Your Honor, <clears throat> that's all I have. Ms. Rock, do you have any questions? No, sir. Mr. Skronik? Oh, I'm going to meet myself while I get in trouble. Lord. I'm in. <clears throat> Mr. Skronik? A um, couple of questions for Ms. Johnson. Again, Ms. Johnson, uh, what is the current street address that you are living at? Ms. Johnson? Ms. Johnson, I'm asking you. I'm not asking whomever's in the room with you, Your Honor. I don't know who she's talking to. It's, it's quite a distraction, Ms. Johnson. Oh, sorry. I was talking to um, Miss Merrill's son. But um, concentrate. We're not. We're toward the end of our hearing, so concentrate on this, and you can talk with him when we get through. Okay, that would be helpful. Um. Hold on, let me repeat my question. Let me, let me repeat my question. My question is, and I want, if you don't know the answer, you don't know the answer. I just want you to tell me, based on your own knowledge, what okay. is the street address of the address you are currently living in? Oh. Okay. And what city? <laughs> McDonough. I can't spell it, but. Okay. And how many bedrooms total are in the house? More than two. That's not what I asked you. I said, how many bedrooms total are in the house? If I had to guess, four. Four? Mm-hmm. Okay. And you just identified Ms. Merrow's son as being in the room with you. So is it you, Ms. Merrow, and Ms. Merrow's son that live in the house, or are there other individuals in that home as well? Is anybody going to come? You do know the father's still in here, right? And then I spoke to Robertson and I was like, they're going to come. Okay, it's cool. Um, What was it? Um, can you repeat that, please? Sure. Other than yourself, mm -hmm. Ms. Merrill and her son, are there any other individuals residing in the home that you are currently living at? She has a daughter. Okay. So... Ms. Merrill has her own room, I assume? That is correct. You have, you have a room of your own, I assume? That is correct. Does Ms. Merrill's daughter have a room of her own? That is correct. And does her son have a room of her own? That is correct. Where would your children stay? In the room with me. Ooh, I don't do that, sweetie. I don't even like washing our clothes together. Oh. So how many times have you visited with Chloe and Nine since the 17th of November? I haven't. Well, it was since they were taken. Um, one time. And I didn't visit, I didn't visit them. I visited the residents. And I asked my mom if mother whatever she whatever the birth certificate say i asked if she could take my belongings in there and she said yes and then i had the paramedics um confirm that she took them in there and he said she took i don't know if she did it but she took them into the garage 
where my son was located when I arrived. I heard him say, I want it, and I lost my shit. I, yeah. Ms. Johnson, do me a favor. When when we're in court. Oh, I'm cursing. Oh, my bad. Yes, See, we feel comfortable. We should have came to the courtroom. You, know, you still can't cuss in the courtroom and you're in the courtroom. No, I'm saying it would, it would be less. Sorry. Well, just try to control that because you've been dropping them right and left, yeah. especially when you're talking to whoever it is that's in the room with you. I don't know. Um, but we don't want to hear that in court, okay? Okay. Um, Go ahead, Mr. Skoranek. I'm sorry. That's fine, Your Honor. So, again, I want to just clarify and make sure I'm correct. Other than Ms. Merrill, her son, and her daughter, there's nobody else living in that home other, other than those three individuals and yourself? Living in the home? No. So Ms. Merrill didn't have any other uh, boarders or roommates or anything like that? No. And this eight hundred and fifty dollars that you were saying you get every month uh, uh, to the question Ms. Crane asked you, who is giving you that money? Where do you get that from? A program. I'm sorry. It's from a program. What's the name of the program? In her hands. Damn, this should take forever. Do when did you to... start? When did you start with that program? Um, October of last year. Of 2022? Yes. Okay. When were you evicted from your last apartment? Um, I was evicted from my last apartment in November. And if I have it correctly, Miss or Mrs. Robertson said the 8th, where Mr. Burns stated he was there. And why were you evicted from that apartment? Um, no support um, with the children. So I got fired from my job and only had the $850. My rent was well over $850 plus light bill. And, you know, yeah. So, so you were evicted for non payment of rent. That right. is correct. But not, I completed the lease. So I was on a month to month. So they added more money to it. It was a thing, but whatever. Who are you currently seeing, if any, doctors for mental health treatment? Um, the one that the last doctor I saw was from the defects office of Henry County. Okay, he was a psychologist. So, before I'm Defox, sorry, say that again. Before Defox got involved, mm -hmm. what doctors, if any, were you seeing for mental health treatment? I was not seeing a doctor. What before Defox got involved on the seventeenth, uh, the fourteenth of November? What medications were you taking, if any, for the treatment of mental health issues? I was not taking any medication. What medications, if any, have you been prescribed for mental health treatment? Abilify and Trazodone. Abilify and Trazodone. That is correct. And what are those designed to address? Um. I trazodone is for my sleep. Abilify, I cannot say if it's for my bipolar or psychosis. I don't know. Okay. Ooh, it's a mood stabilizer. That's what it is. So I don't think it matters. When were you last hospitalized for any mental health treatment? Um, The day I showed up at... What's her name? Sean Taylor's. Miss, Miss Sean Miss, Mrs. Whatever, Sean Taylor's house. Okay, so you were hospitalized on November 17th? I, I don't know. In the last 12 months, so from last December till this December, how mm -hmm. many times have you been hospitalized for mental health treatment? Hosp twice. When you recently were hospitalized at Grady Hospital, what were you seen at Grady for? Why did you get uh, admitted to Grady Hospital? Um, well, everybody who was supposed to be of support said that I was crazy and that I should go to a hospital. Grady was the closest one. I'm sorry, did you say Grady was supposed to cure you? Grady was the closest hospital. Okay. 
you said that you went to Grady because all of your support said you were crazy and needed to go to the hospital. Do you think you're crazy? I do not. Not mentally ill. Not that crazy. Like, not like. I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I'm not saying I'm as crazy as everybody is saying. Like, you know. And I actually, I went to psych wards and some of the stuff they were saying was making sense. Some of the stuff wasn't. And I used the stuff that they gave me. Breathing, meditating. I told them what I would prefer. They told me what they gave me suggestions. And, you know. Oh, and also postpartum depression is real. Um, so. And I'm sure my son is going through it, but he's reserved, so he's not going to show it to you guys anyway. Um, yeah. Are you supposed to be receiving any kind of regular injections to help with any of your medical issues? No. Um, I don't have amnesia. And I think Alzheimer's is going to skip my, well, it skipped my father's mother. And it's, my father's probably going to have Alzheimer's, so I'm not going to get it. I did my research a little bit. I didn't do too much. Oh, sorry. Ryan Tank. How long have you been living with Ms. Merrill? Um, good question. Um... Since I was discharged from the hospital, which was th since Thanksgiving. Can you believe it? Was it Thanksgiving? The day after Thanksgiving? So about, what was that? Hold on. I'm getting my calendar. <sighs> about this Monday would be like the fourth week. So coming on to a month now. Wow. <sighs> Do you have a, re a lease or a rental agreement with Ms. Merrill? It's not written up or typed up, but yes, we have spoken about it. Do you pay Ms. Merrill money for rent? Not currently because we don't know what's going to go on with the children. And I might just leave, pay her and then leave. But because I, I won't need a stable housing if I don't have custody of the children. So I'm going to you know, move on. And, um, I mean, I'm sad. I'm not going to say that I'm not sad, but I don't like people trying to tell me what to do and control me and all that. So I'll just let y'all win and move on and have more children. Extremely fertile. Actually, it's crazy. <laughs> um, when Ms. Robinson was working to try to get you and the children into a hotel room with mm -hmm. detox providing some of the money, you were asked by the hotel room, by the hotel to provide a copy of a driver's license and or a debit card or a credit mm -hmm. card for you to get that. Do you remember that? I do. And you refused to provide that information to the hotel. Do you remember that? I refused to put down an ID. I did not refuse a debit card. Okay. Why did you refuse to give them your ID? I didn't want anybody to know where I was at. And how would somebody find out where you were at? Uh, I don't know. I have anxiety, so. Well, who would be looking for you to find out where you are at? I'm not sh Um, Can I ask a question or no? Can't ask a question with a question. Well, I don't know. Do you know what anxiety means? Well, this is the time I get to ask you questions, Ms. No, Johnson. you, you I, asked and question, I said I didn't uh, know who was going to be question, looking for me. Well, okay. My question was, is who would be looking for you? My answer is, I don't know. Oh, my gosh. I don't think I have any other questions, Your Honor. All right. Any redirect, Ms. Crane? No, Your Honor. Mr. Um, Burns, did you have any questions for Ms. Johnson? No. All right. Uh, Mr. Um, Wait, so I can't. Wow. Mr. Uh, Moore showed back up, I, although I don't, I'm trying to. Oh, there he is. He doesn't have his camera on. All right. We would be remiss if not, we, if we didn't ask you some questions.
Uh, Mr. Scavani, you may proceed. So, Mr. Moore, you've already been sworn, so just go ahead and state your name for the record. Francis Moore, Henry County Depex. And you are currently the foster care case manager for nine. And Chloe, tell the court, the judge, uh, we had asked some questions of Ms. Sparks, and she had uh, answered to the best of her knowledge. But tell the court what efforts you have made to try to make contact with Ms. Anesia Johnson since you've taken over this case? Uh, no more than calls and text messages. And has Ms. Johnson responded to any of those calls or text messages? The only time she responded was back like the day before Thanksgiving or like two days before Thanksgiving when I was trying to organize a visit for her and she just responded and said, no, thank you. Since that day, she hadn't said anything to me. Okay. So you tried to set up a visit for her and she declined the visit? Yes, sir. And has she had any visitation to your knowledge with the children since they came into care on November 17th? No, sir. Have you been able to make contact with Ms. Johnson at the home that she is currently allegedly residing in? No, sir. Have you attempted to go out to the home? I, had, I haven't been to the address. Any idea as to roughly how many times you may have tried to call Ms. Johnson or text her since you've had this case? Um, it's been quite a few times, um, even since last court hearing. I think I've called that phone um, maybe four or five times. Sometimes it go through, sometimes it don't. Um, I text her last week, Wednesday evening, to let her to remind her of her um, her uh, competency evaluation. She didn't respond to that as well. And then there was a no call, no show as to the competency evaluation. So, um, okay. So, with regards to her competency evaluation with Dr. Gothard. That was scheduled with last Thursday. You said you called her to remind her about it on Wednesday. Did you notify her of that prior to that date? Yes, I had reached out. Well, I had reached out a few times prior to that date and um, tried to reach her. But again, there's there is no response to even know if she's receiving any of my messages or anything. So if you were able to get through by phone, would you leave a voicemail? Now, when I don't when I don't get through by phone, it seems like her phone is disconnected, almost like it's a block call or something. So you were never able to leave a voice message? No. Okay. Then you attempted to contact her via text message? Yes, I sent her a text and said, hey, this is just a reminder. I think I've even texted her to like the one time ask her if she needed transport. Um, and again, ever, um, ever since the first day we made contact and she told me she didn't want to see the kids, she hadn't responded to anything. All right, so that that uh, contact you said you had with Ms. Johnson to arrange the visitation around Thanksgiving, that was your only mm -hmm. contact with her? That was the only time she responded to me, yes. Yeah. And even that day, I note that she didn't answer the, the phone call. She only responded via text to say that she didn't want to see the kids. Okay. So you've not actually spoken with her? No. Okay. I think that's all that I had, Your Honor, unless the court or Ms. Crane or the Guardian has anything. Anybody have any questions? Ms. Trock? No, sir. Ms. Crane? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Mr. Moore, what is the address that you were provided to go, I guess, go see my client or see her home? I don't I don't have an address. Uh, currently, I'm sitting in the car, but... Um, there, there is an address uploaded in our shine system um, that I could, you know, attempt to see your client at. Did you understand she was living with Ms. Marrow? I found out that at the last court hearing. So would that be the address you have in Shines? Yes, sir. We do have an address for Ms. Marrow in Shines. Okay. And the appointment for last Thursday, did you send that information by text or did you just call? I, I text her and I um, called her. I called her first. Um, it was a, it went straight through like it was like I said, like I'm blocked or something I, or like her phone could have been disconnected. Then I sent her a text. And then also to note, I got an email Thursday from Atlanta Psychological, which is Dr. Uh, Gothard, um office to say that they had been calling in reaching out to mom and she hadn't been responding to them. 
That's all I have, Your Honor. All right. Anything further for the petitioner, Mr. Skibronik? No, sir. Right. Did you have anything else, Ms. Um, Crane? No, Your Honor. Mr. Burns, is there anything you want to tell me? They, He called you for cross-examination in part of the state's case, but if you have something you want to share with me, since you don't have a lawyer, you can just tell me, and hopefully it will... There won't be any objections, but they'll jump in and object uh, telling me something you're not supposed to tell me. Um, no, not that. But uh, we talked about some things early on that I don't think we were on the record. And I know some of them are things we talked about last time, but you and the mother have not been married and are not married, correct? Correct. And you have not finished you've talked about you've said you've looked into it and may have started but you have not secured a court order declaring you the legitimate father of either of those children correct no i have not not yet okay what i need you to do is continue your efforts to hire somebody based on what you told me your income was but um you can submit a financial affidavit to the clerk's office if they have the form down there and you can submit it and we'll look at it and see if you, if I can figure out a way to make you eligible or not. But, um, because you need to get that legitimation done and you can do it in this case. I told you last time you can do it in this case without having to pay the filing fee. It's like a 200 plus dollar filing fee in superior court to file. And this yes, is the only time um, you the only time you can file in juvenile court is when there is a pending dependency case, which is what this is with defects of dependency case. Okay. I was just holding off because I remember they did tell me that they were going to um, do a paternity test and all that stuff for me, but if that's not happening, I can go ahead and just do, do everything on my own. Did you, did you say they said the defects said they were going to get paternity tests for you? Yes, they said I was, I was going to have to take a paternity test and they were the dead mafia kids. Okay. Are gonna... but I, none, of that, none of that has happened yet, so I don't right. know. That's, well, uh, that's not their number one priority, but that's... You yeah, uh, understand that. But they, um, Mr. Um, Moore, is that on the horizon for you to schedule for him? Yes, yeah, sir. Okay. Because I, if, you know... We need to know biologically that you're the father before we get into the legitimation part. So that they'll take care of that with that uh, paternity testing. And all they have to do is take a swab off the back of your throat uh, to get your basically part of your saliva and where the stuff back there has um, DNA in it. And then they take a swab from the children and then they compare them. So no needles, no blood anymore. So it's very simple. Okay. All right. Anything further? Ms. Schrock, do you have a recommendation? Yes, sir. Um, I would ask that you um, keep custody with the department at this time. I think it's in the children's best interest that they remain in the department's custody. Um, I think that the mother is in need of some intervention and services from the department. And until um, we can resolve some of the issues that have been addressed today at the hearing, it would be in the children's best interest to remain in the custody of the department. Anybody further? Any argument on behalf of anybody? Your Honor, the department would contend that it has presented sufficient evidence that these children are dependent children as to Mr. Burns by virtue of the fact that he is not married to the mother at the birth or conception of these children. He has not legitimated the children, that he currently is a putative father, therefore under Georgia law and does not have any legal rights to the children. Um, I believe Mr. Uh, Burns previously indicated, Your Honor, I think that because of where he's his current living situation, too, um, when we were at the preliminary hearing, um, that he was not able to care for the children. But um, that, that was my understanding from that hearing. Um, the, as to the mother, Your Honor, the department would contend that the uh, department has presented, again, sufficient evidence for the court to find by clear and convincing evidence that the children are dependent children as to the mother based on the mother's ongoing untreated mental health issues, that the mother lacks sufficient uh, housing for herself and the children, 
that the mother is uh, lacking currently sufficient income to provide uh, either any of the necessities for her children and or for uh, housing for herself and the children, and that um, the uh, department had made reasonable efforts to um, achieve, uh, uh, to avoid the necessity of uh, the children coming into care, both by having worked with the mother under the initial safety plan, um, having attempted to put into place a second safety plan and or relative placement, um, and or fictive kin placement from the mother, which she was not willing to do with regards to the children, either as to Mr. Burns or as to Ms. Taylor. Um, and then the department made further efforts to avoid removal by attempting to find um, housing for the mother and the children uh, prior to removal by virtue of uh, finding uh, uh, hotels or, uh, you know, Airbnb, whatever the case may be, that would uh, take the mother and children without success. Um, and about the uh, that the children would be negatively impacted by the return of uh, their back into the home of the mother based on her ongoing untreated mental health issues, um, which the mother has admitted that the testimony and evidence shows that there had been at least uh, several hospitalizations of the mother for mental health episodes by the that the father testified to that the uh, Miss Taylor testified to and that the mother testified to. The mother admits that she's been diagnosed with mental health issues that she's not currently receiving any mental health treatment for, nor is she taking any medications for. Me being um, a mom. Tends that Please the, don't interrupt, man. The uh, department has made reasonable efforts that it would be contrary to the welfare of the children to be returned to the custody of either the mother or the father at this time. The temporary custody of the children should remain with the department uh, pending a final adjudication hearing in this matter and the setting of a case plan. All right, the court finds by clear and convincing evidence that the children are dependent, that it would be contrary to their welfare to be returned to either parent, and that it's in their best interest that they remain in the temporary care of the department pending the final disposition hearing. This department can prepare a 30 day case plan for proposing for services. I need to receive um, the results of the psychological evaluation that y'all say was done sometime at the beginning of services. And I need the um, try to reschedule with Dr. Gothard for her to undergo that other evaluation. And uh, Ms. Johnson, if you will share with um, your lawyer or the case manager the name of the provider, you said you got something on your own. I would like to see that as well. And um, if you get it, you can send it to them. But they, if you give them the provider, maybe they can speed it up and get it sooner. And then we'll convene back at that hearing to hear. I would like you to be visiting your kids between now and then and like you to get back on the scheduled visits that I set up last time. And, um, and I'd like you to stay in touch with your caretaker. I understand you disagree with your kids needing to be in care. And um, I'm sorry, I can't accommodate your desires and your wishes, but um, I bet your kids would like to see you. And I, the whole goal of this is to figure out a way where they can come back home and with you not talking to the caseworker, it kind of makes it hard for us to do that work. So I would encourage you to not make yourself so scarce and um, and let us stay up to date on your phone number and your address where you are. And um, I'm going to give you the dates that we're coming back as soon as the clerk. She's already given them to me. Um, January 16th at three o'clock. Do y'all want to continue to do it on Zoom or do you want to come in person? It's been a while since I've had everybody local. I'm fine to do it either way. Anybody? Can I say something? I'm sorry? I don't Can know. Can I say something? Is that oh, Mr. Uh, Burns? Mr. Burns. Okay. Yes. Yeah, uh, before you were speaking, a uh, gentleman before you were speaking, um, he said that I said that I couldn't take care of kids or I didn't want them. I never told anyone that. And my living situation doesn't have anything to do with me trying to get the kids or take care of them. Okay. I never told anybody I did not want the kids. Okay. Well, we've been talking about getting the legitimation started so you can see if you can, uh, the mother has a right to object to that. And I, I may have to a contested hearing about that issue. But you've already been told in Georgia to secure custody of an illegitimate child, you have to have legitimated the child first. Okay. Yeah, that I understand. But that, that, 
Uh, I'm not trying to be argumentative, but that has nothing to do with the fact that I don't want to take care of my kids because I haven't gotten legitimized or I haven't done it. I don't have the funds to. It doesn't necessarily mean I don't want my kids. I don't think that's what he said, but I, I appreciate you sharing. All right. Um, January the 16th at 3 o'clock. Then we're going to have a 75-day judicial. You'll all get copies of this if we have your current addresses. Uh, we scheduled a 75-day review on February the 12th. Uh, Clark has scheduled those at Zoom, so if y'all want to change them to live hearings, you need to let me know because it factors on when we can hear them, but we can definitely do them either way. And then a, a nine-month permanency review on August 19th. So uh, we'll send you that. But the most important one is when you come back on the 16th of January, which is fast approaching. Okay, and the department's required to give uh, any proposed case plan to mom and or dad uh, within seven days of that hearing so they can review it and be ready to talk about it, okay? Send me a proposed order, circulate it to the lawyers, and I will see y'all on the 16th of January. I didn't hear anybody say otherwise, so um, we're going to stay on Zoom. If you change your mind and want to be live in the courthouse, don't wait till the 15th because it'll be too late. But if you let me know in the next week or so, we could probably figure it out and keep it at the same time and change it. We'll conclude the hearing. Thank you all for your time. Thank you, Honor. Thank you. Thank you.